introduction about the role of catalysis in the chemical processes and what are the scientific challenges research are dealing with. Then I have the topic of my talk, Design of Efficient Catalysts. I will give some examples of how spectroscopy can help in the design of the catalyst. Catalysis, as all of you know, is a key role in many chemical processes because it allows to accelerate the reaction rate and as you can see here is by decreasing the activation energy of the reaction. The chemical industry is a pillar in our economy and it's essential for practically all manufacturing sectors like transportation, like plastics, pharmaceutics, chemicals. And the feedstock today for all these products are fossil resources. It means natural gas, coal, and oil. And indeed, if we look to this graph, we can see that nowadays, practically the 80% of the total energy demand that includes the transportation, the industry, the electricity and heat came from fossil resources. This means a large production of greenhouse gas emissions like CO2, methane, NOx, which as in the case of the CO2 is increasing continuously due to economic growth and development. So the main point of this greenhouse gas emission is the environmental impact and climate change, seawater, acidification and smog. So from a point of view of sustainability, it's really very important to develop environmental clean resource and energy efficient industrial processes. And in this scenario, the renewable energies, the use of new raw materials like the CO2, the nitrogen, water, biomass, and combined with the development of efficient catalysis are the key points of a new economy, which would look like this, where the inputs come from renewable resources and new raw materials like CO2, nitrogen, and the outputs are chemicals products which are suitable for the different sectors like transportation, agriculture, pharmaceutics. And to achieve this model, which is very challenging, we need really to develop new catalysts and new technologies. And these are the scientific challenges we are facing with. So let us go to the topic of my talk. How can we design new catalysts with high efficiency? For that fundamental knowledge of active sites is very important yeah. approach combining spectroscopies with high input in advanced spectroscopy, time and spatial resolved spectroscopic tools with theoretical calculation, catalysis and kinetics, it means chemical engineering and synthesis. So for the design of efficient catalysts, we need to know on one hand, how the reactants are activated on the catalyst surface. For example, you can see here in the case of nitroestyrene. Nitroestyrene can be activated by the nitro group and then it evolves into aniline in presence of hydrogen or it can be activated by the carbon-carbon bond and then evolve into nitroethylbenzene under hydrogenation. So we need to know how the reactant is activated on the catalyst surface, but we need to know more than that. We need know, to know how it's possible to modify this type of activation by modifying the nature and the state of the active sites. Another point that's very important is to understand how intermediate species are stabilized on the catalyst surface because this has a very, very strong implication on the selectivity of the reaction. 
And finally, we need to know also how the desorption of reaction products take place in order to avoid the secondary reactions. And key point in all these studies are spectroscopy, either in situ, ex situ, as I will show later with some examples. First of all, let us give you some examples of the design of efficient catalysts and their relevance in industrial processes. One important reaction in many industrial processes related to the production of fragrances and um, pharmaceuticals is the selective hydrogenation of alpha, beta and saturated aldehydes, like for example, citral to geraniol. Obtaining the unsaturated the alcohol is really challenging since from the point of view of the thermodynamic, the hydrogenation of the double bond carbon-carbon is more favorable than the hydrogenation of the carbonyl group. For this reaction, state-of-the-art catalysts are monometallic, palladium, platinum, ruthenium-based catalysts, also bimetallic, platinum, tin, platinum, germanium alloys. And besides these catalysts, one really interesting approach to favor the activation of the carbonyl group is the design of the bifunctional catalyst containing Lewis acid sites in close proximity to the metal sites. In this case, we can, as you can see here, activate the carbonyl group by interacting with the metal and the adjacent Lewis site. And this can be achieved, for example, in the platinum tin, tin beta zeolite, in which the platinum tin nanoparticles are located inside the channels of the tin beta zeolite, where the tin is isomorphous substituted in the zeolite acting as a Lewis acid site. So you can see here very clearly this type of B functionality. And with this type of catalyst, we achieve, as you can see in this graph, a very high yield to the general compared to the corresponding platinum and platinum tin supported beta catalyst, where this type of B functionality is absent. Another way very well known to modify the activity of metal nanoparticles is changing the size of the metal nanoparticle. In general, if we decrease the particle size, the number of unsaturated sites, like you can see here, the number of steps and the numbers of corners increase, and this generally results in a higher reactivity of the catalyst. And this can be clearly, very clearly seen in the case of gold catalysts. Gold catalysts are inactive as bull, but their activity increase, and in some time it could increase exponentially at decreasing the particle size. So in this direction, in a very exciting work performed in our group, in the group of Professor Korma, we found Catalytic activities in the order of the enzymes when gold appears as small clusters composed of few atoms. You can see here, for example, we have clusters of three atoms, of seven atoms, of four atoms, and these clusters have extremely high activity in this reaction. And this high activity of these small metal clusters or even single atoms is nowadays a very hot topic in catalysis. And as you can imagine, with really important industrial applications. We are still working in this field. We have important contribution in the case of ruthenium, palladium, platinum, copper-based catalysts, where the size is in the cluster range and in very important industrial processes. And finally, another way 
to modify the activity of a metal nanoparticle is integrating atoms like the carbon, like nitrogen, like hydrogen, phosphor, into interstitial sites of the metal lattice. This is, for instance, in the case of the transition metal carbides and nitrides. And a very interesting application of this type of materials has been observed in our group in the CO2 hydrogenation to methane. This reaction is very important, has received very high interest in the last years as a way of storing the excess of renewable energies in a chemical compound, which is methane. Methane is raw material in our industry. It's an interesting reaction, but it has a very big limitation, and the main limitation is CO2 activation. CO2 is a very stable molecule, and it requires temperature in the order of 300, 450 degrees. So we found that the presence of carbide species in a ruthenium-based catalyst promote the CO2 activation to methane at really very low temperature, 160 degrees, if we compare with the state of the art temperature of 260, 300 degrees of conventional ruthenium based catalyst. And this possibility to decrease the temperature even 100 degrees has important industrial application repercussion. So we have seen at this stage some examples of new concepts, new ideas of catalysts. Let us go to the last part of my talk, how spectroscopy can help in the design of new catalysts. And this will be illustrated in two examples. On one hand, let us consider the hydrogenation of nitrobenzene to aniline in a direct route, being nitrosobenzene and phenylhydroxylamine intermediate species. And on the other hand, the hydrogenation of the nitrobenzene to azo compounds in a condensation route between the nitrosobenzene and the phenylhydroxylamine. Spectroscopic studies, specifically infrared studies performed on two catalysts, the gold titania and the gold seria, have shown that the key point in directing the reaction through any of this route, and accordingly given the selectivity of the reaction, is the amount of nitrosobenzene on the catalyst surface, which is influenced by the type of the support. So in the case of the basic support, like for example, seria, infrared studies have shown a strong stabilization of the nitroso intermediate species on the catalyst surface, enhancing, in this way, the coupling reaction toward azo compound formation. However, in the case of a non-basic support, for example, titania, based on infrared studies, we observe that the nitrosobenzene is very weak absorbed on the catalyst surface and a very fast hydrogenation of nitrosobenzene to phenylhydroxylamine and finally aniline take place. So you have seen how important is the nature of the support in tuning, modulating the selectivity of the reaction. So based on this idea, we developed a very efficient catalyst for the hydrogenation of nitrobenzene to azobenzene, which much more activity than the previous reported gold serial catalyst. And that is combining a non-novel metal like nickel, which is very active in the hydrogenation of nitrobenzene to nitrosobenzene, with a basic support where this nitrosobenzene can stabilize and 
promote the coupling reaction to a toxy and finally azobenzene formation. Another very interesting um, example of how spectroscopy can help in the development of new catalysts are time-resolved spectroscopic studies, which enables accurate structure activity correlation. This has been observed in the oligomerization of ethylene on nickel beta catalyst. As you can see here in the beta catalyst, nickel can be located either in ion exchange position or can interact with silanol groups of the zeolite. And both of them has been reported as active sites in this reaction. So in our work, performing these time-resolved infrared studies combined with mass spectroscopy, what we have observed is a very fast deactivation in the first 10 seconds of the reaction of the nickel sites in ion exchange position. And under reaction condition, a time of stream of one and a half hour, the only site which is stable under reaction condition are the nickel coordinated to silanol groups behaving this as the real active site. So you will see how important real is to perform in situ operando studies because it gives you the key, the clue of the real active sites, which is very important for further development of new catalysts. So if I can conclude my talk, I have given some examples of new concept of catalysts with high catalyst efficiency. I have shown a multidisciplinary approach is important, highlighting the role of the in situ and ex situ spectroscopy. And I will acknowledge uh, different projects, my group,